All right, today's job is to install this dehumidifier into this HVAC and duct system. Of course, we've got an Ultra 70 from Santa Fe. That's a great little dehumidifier. And we've got an older HVAC system here, but the nice thing about this installation is once the dehumidifier is in, when this unit gets replaced, nothing really will have to change over here. The equipment itself can just get swapped out and everything else can remain the same. But let's go ahead and get started. Of course, when you're in an attic or above a finished space, you always wanna put the dehumidifier in a pan because it does make water. And the other thing that I like to do is use a pan that doesn't have a drain connection on it. That way we can have a pan switch. So if this pan fills up, it's just not gonna keep draining out and the homeowner will never know about it. It's gonna shut the dehumidifier off and we're gonna see that in spiked humidity and we'll be able to come out and service it. The other thing that I've done is I went ahead and had Sheet Metal Shop make up these custom size pans. These will fit not only the Ultra 70, but the Ultra 98. So those are the most commonly sold ones here in my market. And so either way, I'm covered with the same pan. All right, so the return is really close to the dehumidifier. And all we did is we extended the collar that the flex duct connected to our return filter box. We just put that collar in there to extend it. That way we could put a side tap and we'll flex that right in to the dehumidifier. Nice low static pressure area that we're going to pull from. It's not going to fight that dehumidifier at all. All right, so return is hooked up. It's strapped in place. It's connected to our return box there. The air will come up, it'll go through the filter, and then we'll be able to pull some of that air from that nice low pressure collar, uh, which would be a lot better than trying to pull it from the air handler, which would be a lot more static pressure. It would put more strain on the dehumidifier that way. So duct sealing is really, really important to me, as many of you know. So even though I've taped these joints and I'll continue to tape them around here, I'm also going to go over them with mastic just because I want all, everything that I do to be airtight. Yes, it is a belt and suspenders kind of approach, but I am literally a belt and suspenders kind of guy. I'm wearing suspenders right now and they are clipped to my belt because I'm tired of my pants falling down. Anyway, back to the dehumidifier. Okay, before we insulate this, I do want to talk about this fitting here. This is a 45 degree fitting, and yes, I am reducing it down to a six inch before it goes into this 45 boot. The reason why I'm doing that, first of all, Santa Fe recommends that we now inject the dehumidify supply air into our supply duct at a 45 degree angle so that it can merge in with the other air stream coming from our air handler. But I also reduced it because I want to increase my velocity pressure so that I really get that airflow in there. And as you can tell, our supply duct is actually really, really short. So I'm trying this out. Of course, we're going to hook up manometers to it. We're going to take airflow readings and we'll see how it works at the end of the uh, job. The other thing that I do want to talk about is this damper. This is a motorized damper and I've reversed the action, meaning that I've now made it where when it says open it's actually closed and it has the power to open. So open will take 24 volts, the needle will go here instead of being closed it'll actually be open. The reason why we're using a power damper instead of a backdraft damper is that those dampers are spring-loaded and what ends up happening is the backdraft damper wasn't open all the way and so it becomes an, a restriction. It is really limited by the velocity pressure coming out of our dehumidifier but when we have a motorized damper well then we know this can be fully open all the time and when the unit isn't running it's going to positively close those gaskets inside the damper are going to prevent any air from backtracking back through our dehumidifier and turning it into a giant bypass throwing cold air back on our evaporator coil and possibly freezing it up. I wanted to show you something else that I'm using on my dehumidifier installations. For one thing I'm always using a pan switch but once I run this drain line it will connect to this drain line off the air handler uh yeah and i wouldn't do all that but i'm not here to fix all that but because it shares a drain line with the air handler if that drain line backs up past where we tee into it then water could drip into this pan fill this pan up that means we need another drain pan switch in the air handler pan that actually cuts off our dehumidifier 
because we don't want a situation where this pan is filling up with water it turns air handler off but the dehumidifier has no idea and it continues to fill that pan with water eventually overflowing it and causing water damage so just thinking about where the water could go a lot of times i end up putting two different drain pan switches on these installations and every opportunity i get I control a dehumidifier from the Haven IAQ Central Air Monitor. This is an induct monitor that measures not only humidity, but also total volatile organic compounds or VOCs and particulate matter. And so right now this monitor is just measuring, well it's measuring all those things, but it is also connected to a controller that for right now is just controlling the humidity. But in the future, after we monitor the air quality, online because it's a Wi-Fi device. After we monitor it for a few months, we can determine if there are other needs that this house has. For example, it may need fresh air ventilation. In that case, we can create an automation. We run a fresh air duct perhaps from one of these gable vents. We tee it into the return here and then we have a control damper that the Haven also turns on and off based on indoor air quality. Or perhaps if particulate matter gets high, maybe we create an automation that turns on the air conditioning fan, not the outdoor unit, just the air handler fan to move air through the filter to hopefully clean up the air. So we got a lot of choices here with the Haven. Right now I'm just using it for humidity, but we have room to grow per the needs of the customer. Because the humidity is so important, here in my climate. I also have a backup dehumidistat here in the return plenum. It doesn't get affected by the heat of the attic, but rather it reads the humidity of the air that's passing through the return that the unit's pulling in. And it's set at 60%. This is the backup in case they lose Wi-Fi or something happens to the Haven. We still always have a fallback of 60% relative humidity by this non-Wi-Fi device. You may ask why I didn't install it just on the wall next to the thermostat. The reason is because the humidity controller rarely needs to be adjusted. We want to set it and forget it. And in some places, maybe not so much this customer, but in some rentals and other situations, you may not want your humidity controller where the occupant can mess with it. And so that's why I put it, it's serviceable. All we have to do is pull the filter out and get to it from a ladder, but it is not readily accessible to the homeowner. Well, as we're almost wrapped up with this project. I've got my smart probes on there. I just got to tidy up a few things, make sure my Haven is working. I'm going to insulate my drain line, but let's go ahead and test the operation. Well, it looks like I had my supply and return probes backwards, but the number is correct. This is with the air handler off. So my dehumidifier is only seeing 0.12 inches of static pressure. That's really, really good. That's really, really low. And it's gonna allow the dehumidifier when the air handler is off to be able to move very close to its rated airflow. And even with my air handler running, the static pressure is a little bit higher, but it's still not bad. And that's because I took some very deliberate and intentional steps, wying in my supply into my supply duct and choosing a low return pressure location to keep that static pressure low, even when the air handler's running. According to Santa Fe's technical information, I'm running somewhere between 130 and 140 CFMs at that static pressure. So that's really good. The next thing we're going to do is check our entering and leaving air temperature and humidity. And we're going to plug these numbers into my Munter Psycro app so that we can quantify how many BTUs of latent removal. We can convert that to pints per hour, pints per day. Just verify that this dehumidifier is performing correctly. As we can see, it's removing about 1.77 pints per hour. If we multiply that by 24, that's 42.48 pints per day. You might be asking, why is it so low? It should be 70 pints per day, right? Well, dehumidifier manufacturers are required to rate their capacities at a certain very specific set of incoming air conditions that do not mimic real life conditions. There's a lot of humidity in the air in those conditions and no ductwork is connected. Whenever we put this dehumidifier in real life conditions with some ductwork, they will almost never match the rated capacity. But fortunately, Santa Fe is very transparent and they publish their expanded performance data so that we can still check the performance. Whenever I see a dehumidifier operating between 40 and 60 pints per day and it's a 70 pint per day rated, I'm usually pretty satisfied with that result.
it's been two weeks since the installation, and I am really happy with what I see when I pull up the Haven report. My indoor dew point is staying well below the red danger line, and it is hovering right around the set point that I've got it set to. So this is really something that Haven does very well. You can track your temperature, humidity, indoor air quality, and verify your results. As a contractor, that is super important. All in all, this was a successful project, and the client is very, very happy. If you want to learn more about how Santa Fe dehumidifiers and the Haven Indoor Air Quality Monitor and Control System can work together in expanded capabilities, I'm happy to help. Please feel free to reach out, and for now, thanks for watching.